Okay, so we've seen one we've created a serial arc that we couldn't manage to actually make an arc that was a bad arc that caused the AFDD to operate. Now you've said to me, David, that you can create an arc, is that true? I can, uh, with the, the aid of my 10 kilovolt transformer here. This is a, a neon transformer for powering neon signs made by an Italian company called FART. Uh, I don't know what it stands for. It stands for something in Italian, but that's their name. Um, so this is going to put out uh, around 10,000 volts, obviously AC because it's a transformer. Uh, very low current, I think it's only really rated at like 37 milliamps okay. or something like that, but it's a very high voltage. Obviously it's going to step up the 230 volts to 10 kilovolts. And that's going to go to uh, two prongs here, uh, two electrodes, an anode and a cathode. Um, and uh, we should see some uh, fiery effects between them. Okay, let's, let's go live with that then. Plug in and stand back. Wow, Dr. Emmett Brown time. Yeah. So there's a, a rising arc. We'll have to have a look at why that's rising and how it's being generated. We'll have a go with it with the front cover removed so you can see, okay. see what's going on there. And as it heats up, it actually gets, uh, gets a little bit faster. That's fantastic. We're watching it on the big screen as well as here. So as you're looking at it on the camera from here, we're looking at it over there. And that's a fantastic looking driving arc. Sounds great, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> 1.21 gigawatts, I think yeah, it was, wasn't it? stick your finger in there. Then. No. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, okay. so if we unplug that now, so we're going to turn it off. So, can we turn it off now, please? Come on, please turn it off. No, no, we're going to take the cover off. Okay, then. So we've removed the glass, yep. and we should be able to see the arc from its base point rise all the way up. So, what's going on there then for us, David? Uh, first of all, um, what we have here are, are actually two barbecue skewers, much to the wife's annoyance. She wasn't able to make her kebabs that day, and uh, they're rather amateurishly. Uh, stuck through this um, carpenter's modesty block onto what is actually a, a, a spare tile from when I retiled my downstairs loo. Okay. Um, so it's all, uh, all very um, valuable information. Uh, Dodgily suggest. knocked together on a, a very hungover Sunday with whatever materials were to hand, uh, with the exception, of course, of the transformer that was bought specifically for the job. So um, the the output of the transformer just goes to these two two skewers, and we can see that there's a, a very small air gap at the bottom. Obviously, we got. Um, the, the, the only contact between the skewers is both the plastic uh, block that holds them in place and the, the air, yeah. uh, both of which have a, uh, a high um, insulation resistance. Yes. Uh, if we were to take our multifunction tester, our mega, flute, whatever, and do a, an IR test by connecting them to these prongs, um, we would see that it would go off scale high because the, the um, resistivity of the air and yeah. the plastic is such that they're not actually connected together. Exactly, so it's not going to jump the gap. Uh, but if we bump that voltage up yeah. to more than the, the test equipment can put out, so more than the, the thousand volt scale that they normally go to, if we can bump it up to 10,000 volts, then what we'll actually do is we'll break down the resistivity of the air. And you'll, what you'll see at the bottom here is a, a bright blue flash as the resistivity of that air breaks down and the, the voltage arcs across. Uh, between the two prongs. As soon as that arcs across, it, it effectively short circuits the transformer, so the voltage level drops, the current rises as the, as the current path opens, and we, we um, electrify the air. And what we end up with is a, a rising plasma arc, uh, a hot air arc. Yes. That because of the heat of it and because of the shape of these prongs will, will rise up the thing and then obviously eventually snap at the top and the right. process begins it is again. again. Yeah, we go again. Okay, so we'll step in back and let's see what we've got here. You can hear the snap as that blue spark forms across the bottom as the, uh, the air originally, uh, initially breaks down. And you can see that not all of them get to the top, but at the point at which it does break, it starts the process again. So watch and see how many get to the top, how many stop before the top. And two, that one didn't, that one did. Obviously, the higher up it gets, the harder it is for the arc to maintain because it's having to cross a wider gap of larger resistance. That's fantastic. Well, at least that's my understanding anyway, but my GCSE physics was appalling in a very long time ago. So <laughs> Don't worry, Joe, <laughs> you could tell me if I'm Joe would have wrong. stepped in if we were wrong. <laughs> we're okay. That's just, yeah. We weren't doing that today, were we, until David came? Yeah? And again, this, this won't trouble your circuit breaker because it's just a load for the transformer. Um, there's no overload on the incoming supply to it. It won't trouble your RCD because nope. it's not a fault to work. And it won't trouble your AFDD because it's not on the distribution wiring. It's 
are isolated by the transformer onto the load side. So even if you have an AFDD and you have some kind of fault on the load side that's isolated from the supply by a transformer, opto, a transformer opto isolator, anything like that, the AFDD is just not going to notice it. And if you leave it going for long enough, you can actually smell the, the ionised air because it's ionising the air as it's. Uh, and it's in use. It smells like a like a photocopier if you're close to a photocopier oh, or a laser printer. Which is bad for the environment. <laughs>